As mentioned in the intro, much of this analysis stems from David Lynch himself. So this portion will present a brief mention of some things that can be relevant, to developing a basis to understand the point of view presented here. It may help to know something about the background and interests of any artist, to begin to develop an idea, of what they might want to portray and explore in their art. With regards to David Lynch, I will mention two things that may help to appreciate his work from a deeper, and artistic, as well as a philosophical perspective. Firstly, as a young art student, David Lynch had travelled to Europe, intending to study with the Austrian Expressionist artist, Oskar Kolkoscher. Although he never made it to Kolkoscher's art school, and returned from Europe after only two weeks, it still seems a strong indicator, that Lynch had a serious interest in what Kolkoscher was doing. I am aware that Lynch may have claimed to dislike Kolkoscher's art, but his effort to study with him, suggests Lynch may still, have been drawn to, and moved by Kolkoscher's artwork. Kolkoscher was a pioneer in the Expressionist art movement, and he is best known for his paintings, although he also was a playwright and poet. Now Expressionists are concerned with expressing the inner emotional experience, more so over the physical, external, and material world. This might be imagined as giving form to the physically formless, non-material, emotional and mental states, of feelings, emotions and moods, that otherwise have no physical form. Kolkostya is said to paint with the light from within, and portraying his subject's character, and psychological states of mind, and being less concerned with the outside visual, physical appearance. Lynch's early interest in expressionism is, in my opinion, key to experiencing Lynch's work on a deeper level, than the outer physical narrative, or story might suggest. His early student films seem examples of this direction, that seems strongly related to expressionism. And it may be worth considering that Lynch has frequently spoken to film's ability to express such non-physical feelings. Related to this expressionistic direction, is an idea that he first explored as a student, to create paintings that move. His original effort was as a winning entry to an art contest at his school, and was titled, Six Men Getting Sick, Six Times. It combined painting, animation, film and sculpture into an animated film loop, projected onto a sculpted surface. This marks a beginning to Lynch creating what might be considered expressionistic art, using film, as one of his mediums. These were followed by three other films, The Alphabet, and The Grandmother, and Eraser Head, which all seem to have been done in a style that might be more readily associated with expressionism than his later works would necessarily appear, at least on the outside. It can be noticed that David Lynch makes great use of metaphor and symbols in his writings, lectures and interviews, as well as when he is directing. It gives the experience of the sweetest nectar of life. Symbols and metaphor are part of his language and will be examined in the film analysis sections of this presentation. A second aspect to Lynch that seems important to consider is his long interest in transcendental meditation. He says he has practiced it twice a day, without fail since the early 70s. It has become in some ways, a central element to his life. He recounts having heard the phrase, happiness lies within, but says he had no idea how to get within, to understand what the phrase meant. Meditation became the path that allowed him to go within, and experience what he describes as, a notion of pure bliss, and unbounded consciousness. And meditation is often associated with Eastern philosophical concepts, that stem from Buddhism, Hinduism and other schools of thought, not typically associated with Western traditions. Lynch refers to the Maharishi Yogi, who brought transcendental meditation to the West, and includes references to many of these Eastern concepts in his lectures, interviews and writings. It seems impossible to overstate how meditation has influenced, and even inspired Lynch, both in his personal life, as well as his artistic endeavors, and the positive value he assigns to it, in his own life. Lynch not only practices meditation, but has established the David Lynch Foundation, that exists solely to promote transcendental meditation. Beyond this, Lynch has advocated the theory of the unified field of consciousness, as proposed by Dr. John Hagelin. Dr. Hagelin is well known for studying the effects of meditation on the brain, and is closely associated with Lynch's foundation. Years before Mulholland Drive, Dr. Hagelin had suggested that, 
the unified field theories found in physics, and the parallel unified field of consciousness, are identical. Lynch describes experiencing this unified field, via meditation, as transcending through layers of consciousness. This presentation will eventually address one level of interpretation that perceives the film, as a representation of this unified field, but we have much to cover before getting to that. Lynch also believes meditation can be a means to advance world peace and unity. These ideas and concepts might provide some fundamental insight, into Lynch's mind, and personal interests, that this presentation will attempt to demonstrate, can be observed as a symbolic language in the film, and perhaps, what exists at the central core, as the very essence of the film. It is unnecessary for others to accept Lynch's views, but only to have a basic awareness of them that may help to understand the perspective of this presentation. I am going to mention three basic thoughts, that are derived from what might be considered an Eastern philosophical point of view, that hopefully, will help make it clearer, how to be able to perceive these concepts within the film. I won't go into them in any detail, but just want to provide a list of some well-established ideas. These are all easily researched on Google to learn about them in some detail. Number 1. Desire and ignorance, lead to suffering. Most of us have probably heard something like that, but gave it little thought, thinking it mumbo jumbo. But consider that the term, suffering, can mean many things. In this explanation of Mulholland Drive, I will be focusing on the negative, mental sufferings, manifested as hate, anger, jealousy, fear, anxiety, guilt, obsession, possessiveness, confusion and such types of undesirable emotional experiences. These are some of the kinds of suffering that we hope to avoid, but have all experienced in our own lives. Number 2. Maya is a term that in Eastern thought has various interpretations. I am not by any means a scholar, and I am only presenting a broad and very incomplete explanation of Maya for the purpose of understanding the film. Basically, in Eastern philosophies, Maya can mean fraud, trickery, deceit and illusion. The material, physical world can be thought of as an illusion that deceives the senses, and this unreality differs from the world as it really is. The inner, non-physical world of the spiritual self, is reality. An individual personal reality of awareness, or consciousness. An awareness that may be large or small, depending on the size of one's consciousness. Lynch has used the term, golf ball size consciousness, to indicate a small awareness and understanding. The world can be imagined as a stage with a curtain, or veil of Maya, from which we are only aware of what is on stage and unaware, of the reality behind the curtain. A film, might also be symbolically imagined as, an illusion, with the making of the film, a reality. Again there is much available via Google to discover more about this idea, of Maya, and Eastern philosophy. Conceptually, for me, in a very simplistic way, it has to do with expecting, or allowing, the outer physical world, to determine our own inner world. In a sense, our feelings and emotions, become our own reality. We can be in control, and direct, to a large extent, the direction, of our own individual, mental and spiritual inner world, or let it be controlled by external forces. Our state of mind, and inner spiritual being, is something we have the inner power to control, but may too often, fail to recognize our own ability to retain control of our own mental state. The character of Cowboy asks, how many drivers does a buggy have? I agree with the film's character Adam, that the answer is one. But do you want to drive, or ride along, when considering, the direction, of your own life and state of mind? And driving can be a symbolic element, used repeatedly, in various ways in the film, which will be detailed as we get into the analysis. Number 3. Meditation is a path to achieve inner awareness and reduce mental suffering and negativity. It is a tool that can help lead to enlightenment, and evolving to a higher state of consciousness. David Lynch has devoted a great deal of his time and energies to practicing and advocating transcendental meditation, and believes in promoting peace and understanding, both in the physical world, and the inner spiritual world. It is not necessary to accept these concepts personally, but only to recognize them as, widely believed, 
and long-established philosophical traditions. I am ascribing these points to the mind of David Lynch, and then connecting them to Mulholland Drive, as a key, to open a door, to explore further into the film. These are concepts that can relate to the mind, and in the case of the story and characters in the film, what might be imagined as, an abstract representation, that is symbolically representing a mind not fully matured, or evolved, from the philosophical sense I have been outlining. Imagine on one level, the film, symbolically depicting a mental condition, in a constant cycle of desire and suffering, failing to understand how to evolve to a higher state of consciousness, to discover true happiness. Happiness within. In this context, the term happiness is referring to compassion, peace, love, joy, bliss, contentment, tranquility, quietness. These states in which anxieties and other negativities are not present. These concepts are not mine, and can be easily googled to learn something of them in greater detail. The following video section will relate these concepts, to what this presentation suggests, can be perceived as an underlying theme of the film, that goes beyond the physical story, to a related, but symbolic, and abstract interpretation, connected to the artistic mind, and philosophical views, of David Lynch.